going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to PVD Horror. Today we have a really special episode. This is going to be a little new segment that we have. Um, I'm Brandon, and I'm joined by Dave. Uh, Dave, you came up with this crazy ass idea to, you know, get the social media fa- um, followers interacted with the podcast yeah. by just creating this little segment of co- called what did we just watch <laughs> like what went through your head Trish? oh i thought that they would make us i thought if we asked people to have us watch something for a disc for us to talk about they would give us crazy ass movies yeah and they did not disappoint i was a little nervous i was like at first i was like is anyone even going to reply to this yeah we got a we got a decent amount of replies yeah um the selection was a little hard well th- there's two criteria right mm-hmm. it has to be Actually, there's only one criteria. It just has to be something that we haven't watched. Yeah. Like both of us have not seen either of these movies prior so that we're watching them as first time views, totally fresh. Yeah, there was a few other films that were recommended to us, but we have seen them. um, And I know that you guys want to hear us talk about those films. So we're also going to talk about those films on other episodes of the podcast um, because they were definitely like really great films. And if we did not see them, we're going to add them to our list and we're going to get them. We're going to get to them at some point. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll be putting up that post in our social media story for you guys to add more to the list. Yeah. Um, we'll try to, you know, pick from recent ones, but if we get a backlog of all these great suggestions, we might just pull them from there sometimes too. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah. So uh, the first film <laughs> <laughs> was blades 1989. And yep. that was recommended by Turtle Girly on Instagram. So at Turtle Girly, thanks for this recommendation of Turtle Blade. Turtle. Um, you can find this film streaming on Tubi. I'm pretty sure yeah, it's on Tubi, right? And uh, Peacock and, and the uh, Trauma Now app because it is yeah. a trauma film. Yep. So um, this film stars Robert North, uh, Victoria Scott, and the, just the plot summary is just <laughs> friggin' nuts. Uh, yeah. This just so much to it. Like when it first started off, it kind of reminded me of like Caddyshack a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah. Good point. Yep. I'm like what's going on? Because I'm I'm looking at it. I'm like a little sleepaway camp, Caddyshack, Friday the Thirteenth, because they're by the lake, and then everything just kind of goes like fucking nuts. Like I'm not I'm not sure what's going on. But then I'm like, I had to stop and like look up the film and I'm sitting there, I'm like, what, what am I watching? And I had to realize that this is like a spoof of Jaws. Yes. And yep. I'm like, okay. I did, I did the exact same thing you just described. I literally yep. stopped the movie, looked at uh, the IMDb, IMDb page. Yep. I want, first of all, I want to see who created this film. Yeah. Um, who are these people? Because I haven't seen any of them in other than Victoria Scott was in a couple of things. Uh, but I read the same thing, I immediately saw Jaws. And then watching this while knowing it's a spoof on Jaws makes it a thousand times better. Yeah. Because <laughs> you start to look at every character and you're like, oh, yeah, duh. Like that's, that's you know, it's just everything clicks after that. Yeah, at that point in time. But it, um, like I said, it was like Caddyshack. And it just, this this film has like the craziest fucking taglines. Just when you thought it was safe to put... <laughs> Golf, a game of hooks, slices, and slaughter. I love that. <laughs> and then so it's just like, I'm like, what, what the fuck is going on? But so it's, it's happening at a peaceful country club that becomes haunted by a, a demonic possessed lawnmower who has a taste for human flesh. I'm like, what the fuck is really going on? Because I'm like, I had to go back and watch like the opening scene again and like how they were on the ground i'm sitting there thinking like what the fuck is this thing like is it like critters or something because it it was like rolling yeah i'm like wait a minute i'm like all right but yeah it takes place on a um country club called tall grass country club um the film was actually filmed in uh 50 days in new jersey cape may um, county yeah and so the film received like a limited release. Um, it was in the Grindhouse Theater in Times Square, and it was later broadcast on HBO. So it wasn't really it was, the budget was it was there, 
but I don't think that they really like uh, took advantage of the, of the way they should have, because guess what? Our buddy, John Capiano, Rhode Island native, he did a article on this uh, film back when he worked for dread and he, and he worked with um, he had an interview with the creator of the film. And so the creator huh. of the film was actually going back and forth and saying, you know, man, I wish that um, I had taken advantage of everything and kind of like split the roles up a little bit because he was the writer director. Yeah. And he, he had so many hats on in the film. And so he thinks that he, he, he should have like spaced it out a little bit. And the film actually had like a great campaign for uh, like a fundraiser. So they made like really good money. But like he said, he wishes that they, they had like big time actors and everything that was in it. But he said he wouldn't really do anything over because he, he liked the way that the film came out. But they had enough money for the budget to kind of get bigger names. But I guess. The, Did he watch it? <laughs> like... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that, check that interview out. So it's pretty, it's, it's, it's a little, it's pretty cool. So if you go and you look it up, like John Capiano, Dread, yeah. um, and look up the film, film Blades, you'll, you'll definitely get a lot of backstory to it. So it was Man, everyone's first time. That, John Capiano never like ceases to amaze me. Like his, um, every time, like when we, it was like when we went to see Joe Bob in um, yeah. the Coolidge Theater and they were talking about that, was it brain damage? Yeah, uh, no, it was the brain, right? The brain, yeah. And they were talking about that, and, he, and Joe Bob's like, uh, you know, uh, a Massachusetts man, you made this like research the interest in this film, but his yeah. like, it, it, like, so he just he finds these like these gems and or or blades, and he uh, <laughs> or and, he, and he digs them up and like you know gets people gets information about these films that's like super interesting. Yeah, it didn't look bad actually. Now that like. You know, all jokes aside, the movie, it's, it's silly. It's ridiculous. It didn't look bad at all. So, I mean, it, it was like a pretty well made film. Yeah. In that so, like, it was released on VHS for all VHS fans that really want to go grab a copy of this film. I'm pretty sure you can find it somewhere. Like, you know, yeah. uh, Savers or something. I don't know. But if you, <laughs> you want to check the film out, you're a big fan of uh, Jaws and you want a Jaws spoof, Definitely check it out. And I think this was actually one of the first like spoof films that kind of like created that genre, like because I think like Grizzly and everything kind of happened too. Yeah. Like just just taken off from that because I know after that, you know, Jaws was the first, you know, animal type yeah. mammal that would, you know, film to kind of keep get people going to like doing films like that. So re it released on DVD as a triple feature with two other trauma titles. Blood Hook and Zombie Island Massacre. Do you own that, Dave? Is that something that you want to get? I, I don't. I've seen Blood Hook. It yeah. is hilarious. Like it's kind of like Blades, I guess. Um, yeah. I haven't seen the other one. Yeah. So, like I said, you know, it, it starts off at the uh, at the golf course, the country club, and it's a big situation going on with uh, a new person <laughs> being brought in. And the lady wasn't happy. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil too much because I, I, I. What are we supposed to do in this? Are we just gonna sit there and recommend it, or like? I mean, we don't have to break it down too much. I want. I want people to see, to see this, but uh, yeah. You know, it's funny because it's like it sort of reminds me of like one of those like really horny like '80s films, but yeah. it's like it doesn't go anywhere with that horniness. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like overly sexual, but it's like there's like these sexual undertones of like this guy is like, you know, all these ladies are trying to get with him, but like, we don't <laughs> see anything, which is fine. I didn't really want to see any of those people naked. There was a lot cut out, I guess, because that was something that was brought up inside that interview. With ah. John. There was, um, I guess just the, the relationship between the two main actors, it wasn't there, you know what I mean? So they didn't want to like focus all that time onto that. So it was just like, all right, let's kind of keep it where it is. And so that was a lot of some, some stuff was cut out. So, okay. That makes yeah. a ton of sense. And plus he looks much older than her. Yeah. So at first I'm like, is she supposed to be a teen? And then like, is like, what, is this guy like fucking 45, 50 or something? <laughs> yeah, he looks old. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I'm sitting there just like, what's going on? But then I'm looking at her and I'm like, wait a minute. She's not a teen. Like, yeah, I mean, she's no. a little bit older. But like, they made her come off like she was a teenager. And I don't know what they were doing with him. So No, no. The casting was weird on that end. Like, yeah, yeah. there was there was no romantic sparks. Um, yeah, that there was. <laughs> and there was like, all right. So our our like killer is a lawnmower yeah. and like watching people look at it like one person all of a sudden looks over and the lawnmower is coming and goes holy jesus here it comes it's a freaking lawnmower <laughs> like you just but they couldn't outrun it and it like does it reminded me of freddie versus jason when jason goes into the middle of the party and just starts like slashing everybody yeah. the lawnmower just literally does that in a golf course but but get this like that it was being filmed like i think five weeks in i think five weeks into production and everything like that and everything the lawnmower wasn't around so they were like recording without that lawnmower being there so, <laughs> so just think about They're all those running lawnmower, around all those scenes just like having that with no lawnmower yeah and then, like, and then when they finally got the lawnmower i don't think they were really happy because they wanted it to be bigger and it was <laughs> so and then they had so many problems because it was tested on, uh, it was made and tested on concrete, like, you know what I mean? And so when they got it onto the grass, it wasn't working well. <laughs> so oh they just had God. some one more. So there's a lot of backstory to that fucking. Wow. Fight. But I want to say, like, when the film first starts off, that guy's face that discovered the first kill was fucking classic. <laughs> The fucking terror in that man's face. He deserves a fucking award. Like, he's just sitting there. He looked like Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> speaking of Caddyshack. So I was just like, what the fuck? I'm like, this guy's just sitting there. Like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> there's, like, there's a scene where, like, they're, um, I think they're getting, like, golf lessons or something like that. And yeah. in the background, you just see a bunch of old people on their um, their golf carts and they're like driving backwards and this way and like for no reason at all i have no idea why that was happening they were just yeah, driving yeah. i was like is there some kind of force making all the like golf carts go crazy or haywire and there was none of that it was just like literally made no sense to me it was just a yeah. bizarre ass golf course <laughs> there was a extra scene like you know when it was over you want to want to speak on that yes. <laughs> which i also I, this like doesn't make sense um yeah there's a scene of somebody cutting he's cutting hedges which we yeah. had seen him a few times doing that in the film i think he's cutting yeah. hedges he gets called in for dinner or something i forget what it was and all of a sudden you just see like the hedges hedge clippers come to life and yeah. then on the screen it says hedges shouldn't it have if blades represents the lawnmower shouldn't the title yeah. of the hedge hedges movie actually have been like shears or clippers yeah. or something about the hedge clippers not just the bushes themselves like this movie wasn't called grass yeah <laughs> it actually but, made no sense but i would yeah. love to see that movie happen did yeah, they john, did they talk about that in the interview yeah john john had asked them about that and he said that it was just like a, it was like a joke but i think they would they were on board to make a sequel to this movie oh, i'm not God. sure if they fucking made it but I have to check it out if they if they did because that interview that John had I think that was back in the early like two thousands, so um, they, yeah, I'm not sure. So this goes like into the Jaws um, parody so much that we have like every character has like their own character in this one. Right yeah. down, uh, Clint is, his version is like this guy Deke, who is. <laughs> bizarre but he does this scene this scene where he like decides he's gonna get out and he's gonna outrun the the lawnmower <laughs> he goes that's right let me see you take a bite out of my ass <laughs> <laughs> oh man but that, that kill scene was like good though when he was uh <laughs> his legs are just getting fucking tore up though yeah there was like uh two scenes at least two scenes with somebody like getting run over by the lawnmower, but it only makes it to the legs. They must have yeah. had like, they must have just had really good like prosthetic legs that they were using as a prop. Yeah. Um, but that was that was kind of fun to watch legs getting chopped up. Yeah. Was it? So now after viewing this film, would you recommend it to anyone else? Um, 
I can honestly say I already have. Oh. And like I as like it's a joke. Like, you know, it's yeah. you watch it and it's a comedy. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. If you know people who like parodies of horror films and like cheesy ass 80s horror films, no. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't watch it again though. I wouldn't watch it again. No, hell no, no. I would have to check and see if Xavier would like this because he's a uh, you know Joe's is his favorite film, so I, I want to see what he Ooh. would think. But will will it stand the test? Will it stand? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, it, it, like honestly, if it's someone who is a serious movie lover, uh, no, I'm not gonna recommend yeah. it. But somebody who likes these uh, crazy ass movies might will probably find it funny. If anything, you can just kind of like take pride in the fact that, hey, I just watched a Jaws uh, parody that involved the killer lawnmower. And that's pretty, pretty amazing. Well, yeah, I have to say that that was a good choice because I've never heard of this film. Yeah. And uh, thanks, Turtle Girly. And you can catch it streaming on Peacock, Troma Now, and Tubi. If you check this film out, let us know what you think about it. (laughs) We're gonna po- I think we're gonna post it up, and so I want you guys to drop your comments and and let us know what you think about it. And, and don't be mad after you watch it. Like you can't yeah. get mad because we are being very honest. Like you are not gonna like this film, probably. <laughs> <laughs> nah. You might like it, and that's cool. But if you don't, then don't be surprised. But that's um, why that's why this is called. What did you make us watch? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, 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 this isn't on us. Somebody made us watch this. Uh, so that that triple feature you were mentioning of yep. Blades, Bloodhook, and Zombie Island Massacre, you can actually recreate that triple feature on the Troma app now. I just looked. Uh, Troma Now app, Zombie Island Massacre is also on there along with Bloodhook. So go check them all out. I'm going to actually watch Z- Zombie Island Massacre after this. So we'll see how that is. Uh, all right. So that brings us to our second film because we did decide we we're going to do two. Yep. Um, And this was recommended by Miss Mel 821. And she picked the film Race with the Devil. Uh, So this was from 1975. It stars Peter Fonda, which I was like shocked by seeing that. If any, you know, if you know Peter Fonda, you're probably thinking of Easy Rider, not Race with the Devil. Um, But yeah, Peter Fonda was like starring in this uh, film. It was directed by Jack Starrett. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means to anybody. Didn't mean much to me. Peter Fonda was like the only thing that meant anything to me about this film. Um, Brandon, uh, what was this film rated? PG. I'm not sure how this was fucking rated PG. I think it was just because of the time of yeah. release of the film. So 1975, I think that like films were kind of like re- relaxed on like the ratings back then. Did you notice happen- that they, they blurred out the, the nudity? I've seen little cheeks on mine. <laughs> no, you saw cheeks. <laughs> the frontal was blurred. Yeah, there in that uh, scene. Yeah, because the fire was up at that yep. point in time. But I was sitting there thinking, I was like, eh. But there was a lot of other stuff going on, so that's why I was sitting there thinking, like, just the action itself. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, yeah, violence. You know, some, I can. I was surprised. Maybe a PG thirteen. Yeah, yeah, I would have assumed like a PG. I would have actually thought R if I hadn't like I saw yeah. I caught that too, and I was like, "Wow, all right." Um, yeah, if I just if I didn't know that, I would have assumed R. Yeah. So this film is about these two couples, along with one of the couple's dog. Uh, they go on a trip from Texas to Colorado, I believe. They're going to go skiing, and they're in this large motor vehicle. Um, so or camp- a camper, I guess you would say. So one night while late night drinking, uh, Roger and Frank are the two husbands of the couples. They're both like partners, business partners uh, for like a motocross place, I think it is. Uh, So this is weird scene where they're both like dirt bike racing. But it's like (laughs) funny watching like Peter Fonda pulls it off better. The other guy is like very old looking like, I mean, not super old looking. He's probably not that much older than me in all honesty, but like 70s old looking. So it just looked odd watching him on like this dirt bike. that scene was kind of funny, but they yeah. they're late night drinking. Warren Oates, right, Warren Oates. Was it, yeah, 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 um, yeah. He was, and it's just like actually him being cast in that role was kind of funny in general because if you think like in the kind of movie this is, it's usually like 
these two like handsome like adventurous guys and he's yeah. like not like that at all actually he's kind of quite the opposite they both are kind of quite the opposite for what this movie was about mm -hmm. um but they're out they're late night drinking outside of the camper while their wives are inside the camper and they see this bonfire <laughs> and it's like a little across the way and there's this weird looking tree and they got their binoculars and they're they're peeping out this bonfire and there's all these people in robes and they're like oh like trying to figure out what's going on and they're like start laughing because they they're like what's going on here i think they think it's like an orgy at first or something yeah. it's like yeah. they're just like so interested so curious and like giddy because they think they're gonna see they see a girl unrobed yeah. and they're like hey give me those <laughs> so they're passing them back and forth and it's all it's all fun and games and then she gets murdered and then that's when the uh the females come out of the rv get a little too loud <laughs> Turn yeah. the lights on. Hey, you boys keep it down over there <laughs> and he's like shut up <laughs> uh, that's fucking classic though because it was like at certain points in time it was like the movie had like great action to it yeah and um it started off you know and that i guess at that time like that was like the souped up rv that was the top of the line rv <laughs> get at the time With, it was, it was really nice. it's so funny how they like do the they do the tour of the rv at the beginning yeah and then later they go to this like rv camp and like a guy comes in and he's like checking it all out like yeah you can totally imagine that this was like bragging rights at that time yeah. was, Ooh, plastic mine's wood for, like <laughs> the finish of the top got a microwave <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no but yeah I, I bet, was, like, microwaves just came out around that time. Or yeah, something. probably, probably. Especially, like, you know, to have them in RVs and everything like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was just, a, it's a fucking crazy movie. I guess the two main characters, this is, like, their third film that they that they worked with on each other, um, worked together on. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, so, like, this is, like, this is one of the little horror films that they had. Yep. Another one, like, I think comedy and action, so. Sure. Cool. And and like saying horror is kind of like being generous. Yeah. It's more yeah. adventure thriller, I guess. Um, the horror element comes because of like it's so the the it's a satanic ritual that they're watching when they see the girl get murdered. And yeah. then the yeah. cult members, and this scene was cool. Um, they run back to the RV because like the wives had shut the had turned the the lights on and we're yelling for them to keep it down. They run back yeah. in and now suddenly it's like this really thrilling getaway scene where they're you know driving their camper out of the park they get caught caught up in like this little river and the cult members are like all running on foot after them and it was i thought that part was like that was actually one of my favorite scenes in the movie because it was kind of like oh shit get out of there um yeah. it's pretty well done hills have eyes because he brings it back to the rv and yes. everything like that too. so i was just like all right this is maybe the little hard twist on it right here that kind of gives it that little alley -oop. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, I mean, this, what we see like play out after this is basically, you know, they're just constantly trying to get away from these cult members. Um, they go to the sheriff and at first you think the sheriff's a good guy, but then, you know, as they start to like spend a little more time with them, he's kind of downplaying everything they experienced. And you get the sense that like, all right, maybe something else, something bigger is going on. Um, and it's maybe not just like this cult, but it's like actually the whole town. And a thing that they did really well in this film, like as as they start to drive away, because they want they decide that at some point they're going to try going to a bigger city. They're going to get <laughs> he steals a blood sample, which is basically some dirt he put in the bag. And he goes, I'm going to get the big city cops to test this. And, you know, that's their point. That's like the goal now is they're going to get to the big city. They're going to get the police involved and they're going to expose that sheriff and the cults. Um, but the paranoia they experience, like everywhere they go after that was super cool. Everybody they see, they feel like is staring at them. Some people really are. Some people might be just in their head. I thought that was a really cool idea. Um, and around this time, like just to kind of point that out. Satanic panic is in in like in real life society is starting to peak in the 70s and the 80s um so kind of like if you're thinking about it imagine being in this time and like people really are worried about satanic cults this probably is a horror movie at this time yeah 
because there was like certain points I just like you like you were saying like the town the people were just kind of like looking around and it was like weird it kind of reminded me of uh troll 2 at times yeah <laughs> yeah when, when the kid got out of the car he's like to the sheriff where's all the girls he's like girls <laughs> <laughs> girls here <laughs> so yeah yep. fucking two. yep this so um just some facts about this film kevin smith said this was actually a strong influence for the movie Red State that he did. And yeah. this was also the basis for the movie Drive Angry with Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Um, films Because uh, when Red State came out, I remember uh, I had let you use that. And it was, it was just definitely one of yeah. our like favorite films at that time. What, what was yep. that? Like, two, I think it came out like 2008. 2007. Yeah, it must have been it, probably 2007, 2008 or something like that. Um, the director claimed that he actually hired actual satanists to serve as the cult extras um yeah. but that statement might have just been made for publicity that is not certain yeah but i think like you said with, with all that going on around that time i think yeah. that was like really like a good plug <laughs> for sure yeah i mean what better way to get people like scared to see it or like build up a little hyper on the movie than say there's actual satanists in there that's awesome yeah um <laughs> That dog, that dog definitely played a big role in it. That's like whenever, like, I guess in a lot of movies or anything like that, or in real life, whenever things just kind of get weird, the fucking dog's always the first one to kind of know what's going on and can alert you. Yeah. And so like that's what was happening in this film. The dog was just barking and barking and like uneasy. And it, I think some, something happened. With, what happens? What happens in this movie? Oh, boy. So there is some animal murder for all of you um, that are like me and hate seeing the animal murders. The dog meets its demise, unfortunately. And I just warn you guys because I know some people absolutely hate that. Uh, yeah. We got a couple of snake murders. <laughs> um, nice. There was one other thing. Was there, was there another animal? Uh, nope, just dog and snake. Just dog and snake yeah. murder. For now. For now. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some quick taglines. Uh, Peter Fonda and Warren Oates are burning their bridges in a lot of rubber on the deadliest stretch of the road in the country. Of road in the country. That's that's a weird one to put the actors' names in the tagline rather than their character names. I think because at that time, it was like, like I said, those two guys were like so big at the time. So it was just yeah. like, all right. Oh, wow. These guys are in it. Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. I mean? Yep. They witnessed an unspeakable act. It may cost them their lives. <laughs> Witness an unspeakable act. That's kind of the same thing. God help you when the devil wants you. I like that line. And um, if you're going to race with the devil, you got to be fast as hell. Perfect. That, sound, that sounds like something that Ricky Bobby's dad said. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> I think that's a tagline from uh, Talladega Nights. Yeah, <laughs> origin uh, story. <laughs> that that tagline is perfect, though. That that oh, definitely. Uh, so in this and like you know, it's a race with the devil. There's a ton of like chase scenes throughout the film. They're chase scenes in a motorhome. So I mean, that's pretty interesting. I think for me, there's almost like too much reliance on the chase scenes and not enough like action or like other stuff to like like sometimes it's like all right i get it another chase scene people are like attached yeah. like clinging to the to the motor home and stuff like that it's like it's cool at first and after a while it's like all right i wish they could do something different like to the point where one scene like peter fonda like finally gets everybody away and all he does is like he takes off his glasses and he's looking at the camera it's like He's like, whoa, <laughs> like, and that was it. It's like, yeah, because like he, you didn't have to do much. You just kept driving. Um, yeah. well, I don't know. What do you think about that aspect? I think it, I think for a film that was made in the 70s, you can't ask for much. You know, I mean, I think you see down the line, they had what speed with Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Being on yeah. that and busts for most of the movie, you know, it's it's there's only so much you can do. So um I, I think that the chase and the chase scenes and everything like that were all right because it was just like they're always on the go because it was yeah. just like they had to stop they stopped like you said they stopped at the other RV like the motor home wherever like the campground they were at yeah, yeah and yeah. so they started to interact with people so I think 
all they needed to do was I like you said before what, it, the, what gravitates towards everything and kind of grabs your attention is the townspeople that you're sitting there and you're looking at them and I just you don't know if yes. it's if on that team or not like, that's the main thing of it and I think all the little roadside construction things that came on <laughs> like those are cool so I, they made up in certain points yeah but like, like you said it's better though I wanted to, I wanted to see more interaction with the townspeople like there's a scene like you were saying that one in when they're at the pool in the moat in the rv park and then they go to a bar at night that yeah. scene w- was cool to me i loved seeing that like every it looks like the paranoia the the weird people there's a big barroom brawl that's ridiculous um yeah, i wanted yeah. to see a ton more of that but you know like you said it's you know it's a 70s movie which um a lot of 70s horror films have a very slow pace and this did not. Yeah. So I guess this that's kind of like a benefit to this film. Um, definitely goes at a pretty quick pace. And, you know, for what it's worth, like they're definitely not like action star guys, like the two of them, o- Oats and Fonda. Um, but they, you know, they hold their own. They Fonda's like, uh, you know, he, he does a pretty good job. And the other guy is like, at first, you're not sure if you like him. But by the end, it's like, all right, he's 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 a good guy. He's a good guy. He's all right. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. Like you, like you said, seventies films are slow. Like, and I'm usually not really a big fan of seventies films, but I enjoyed this. I enjoyed. It kept this. your attention. It did. Yeah. It did all the, way, all the way to the end. It had a great ending. Yeah. Yeah. It really did. Yeah. Which I will not spoil because I I do think people yeah, should check this cool. out. Yeah. So thank you, Miss Mel. We appreciate yeah. that because uh, this was definitely a great movie and I would have never checked this out if you never recommended this film because, like I said, 70s films are usually not my go-to, but I'm glad I gave this one a try. So I ended up renting this on Prime. Is that how you caught it too? Or did you find it somewhere else? I, I rented it on uh, Apple. Okay. So I didn't see it streaming for free anywhere, but it's, um, I mean, it was a relatively cheap, it's like $2.99 or $3.99 rental. Um, so if, yeah. So if you guys are uh, wanting to check this out, which we recommend, you know, you can find it there. Both of these films, I know we were just, you just said it, but like for this one, but both of these films are ones I don't think either of us ever would have like watched or like, I hadn't heard of either of these. I didn't know Peter Fonda was in a horror movie. Um, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, this, yeah, both of these films nailed it. So you guys on our first episode of What Did We Just Watch really just set the bar high for those future episodes. So thank you guys. Yeah, appreciate it. And like we said, again, we're going to, when are we going to post this in our stories on Instagram? Yeah, okay. well, just, I was going to just kind of put it in like randomly in the month, try to make it a different day. So everyone gets a chance to vote for people who don't, you know, check their Instagram okay. every single day try to catch you off guard, maybe put in a couple times in a month, depending on how many uh, recommendations we get, but we already, we got a ton already. So we'll, uh, we'll keep this going and, you know, pick the ones that we think are going to make the wildest responses, I guess. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for taking this journey with us and we will uh, continue this next month for uh, this kind of episode. So keep your votes coming in and we will, uh, we'll watch whatever you make us. Thanks. Have a great night. Appreciate it. Thanks.